Hello, today I'd like to talk to you a little bit about preparing your binding for your quilt. Um, so I'm just going to tell you how I calculate for my bindings. I don't have a very scientific way of calculating. I do an approximate calculation to know how much binding I need. So if I've got a quilt that is say um, 70 inches long by 46 inches wide, I would then add up all those sides but before I do that I'm going to add an extra four inches to each side just to allow for things like the corners and the joins and things so this is an approximate guide that I work out for myself so I'm going to work on a quilt that's going to be um, 74 inches by 50 inches on because I've added in that four inches per side so I then add up all the four sides so I need to add up 74 plus 74 plus 50 plus 50 um, to get the whole distance around my quilt and so those four numbers added up come to 248. So I know that my binding needs to be 248 inches long and this is all sounding awfully daunting, but it's really not that hard. You've added up the four sides of your quilt. You've got a number that's 248 and we're going to use the fabric that's the full width of the fabric, the strips of, that's the full width of the fabric. And we usually allow 42 inches for a width of fabric. Often it's a little bit more but we're pretty sure we can get 42 inches out. So you divide your 248, your total distance around your quilt, you divide that by 42 to see how many strips you're going to need. So when you divide 248 by 42, you're going to come up with a number that's something close to 5.9, which means that you need more than five strips because it's five point something, and it's less than six, so you'll get away with making your binding six strips long. So you'll need six strips of binding fabric that you are then going to join into one long strip. So I hope that makes sense. Add up the four sides, allowing a little bit extra for your corners and joins. Divide it by 42, which is the width of your um, fabric, and then your answer will tell you how many strips you need to cut. So I need to cut six strips for my quilt that I'm going to make. And so I've got my fabric here. It's the full width of fabric and I'm going to cut six strips out of that. Now I cut my bindings usually two and a half inches wide so I've uh, got a piece of fabric big enough to get six strips out of which is probably something close to half a yard or so, a little bit less maybe and, and I'm going to fold it in half with the selvages together and then fold it again so that it's um, four layers of fabric but a manageable amount for me to, to cut from and I'm going to lay that on my board so that everything's sitting nice and straight and I'm going to cut six two and a half inch wide strips from that. So I'm going to trim off the edge first so that I've got a nice straight edge to start with, using my board to line everything up and to cut along that edge line. Then I'm going to slide my ruler along two and a half inches from that edge and I'm going to cut another strip or oh, a strip there and then continue to slide along two and a half inches each time until I've got six strips cut. So I'm cutting through the four thicknesses, but because we've folded it and we've lined up with the board, we find that everything is sitting pretty straight. And so I'm going to have all my strips ready. And then I'll show you how to join those strips into one long strip. So that there I've got my rounding strips all cut. So as you can see, they're, still, they're quite long on their own. But now I need to join them into one really long strip because I needed that 248 inches. So with my right sides together, and I've got a batik fabric here, so it's often a bit hard to tell which is the right side with batiks. I want to join them on the diagonal um, rather than just a straight join. So if you lay them at right angles, right sides together, but at right angles to each other, and because my selvages are still on, I'm going to um, leave enough that they're going to be out of the way because I don't want to use the selvage, it's often not a helpful thing. And then where those fabrics intersect, if they're sitting nicely at right angles, and if you're not sure, again, you can use the markings on your board to help you line that up so that it's sitting nicely at right angles. And then you can just draw that line across there if you want to join to draw it, or I often just do it by eye. Then I'm going to go to the sewing machine and stitch that little diagonal line there. So just a, a regular straight stitch straight on that line that I've just drawn there. 
Now I can take it out and get the next one ready or I can just continue to feed them through which is what I usually do. So again I'm going to have the right side of my fabric facing up. I'm going to take the next strip and with the right side of the fabrics facing each other I'm going to put that on at right angles and I'm actually just going to do it by eye and I'm going to sew from this corner over here to this corner over here. So I need to make sure that's sitting on straight and then sew across. And I can just feed that straight in so that I don't have all this stuff hanging around. Okay. And then I need to find the other end of my fabric. And again, with the right side up, grab the next strip and right sides together, lay them across each other at right angles and sew that diagonal. So this is the same thing for all these strips. So because you've got six strips, you'll need to do five of these little joins. So make sure you've got the right side up of the one that's in the machine and the right side down of the one that you're adding to it. So this keeps them all together. course they will shortly all be coming apart again. And this is my last one. And we're going to trim these off in a minute. Right. So now I need to trim all those a quarter inch away from the seam and I am going to cut them apart before I do that because it would be very easy to cut right through the wrong bit which would not be helpful. So with your ruler, most rulers have a little quarter inch mark. If, they, if not you can line it up with something on your board that will help you. I'm going to lay the quarter inch marker in from the edge over the seam where I've sewn and I'm going to trim a quarter of an inch away from the seam. So you're taking off those little corners there. And I'm going to do that to all of my joins. There was five of them. So lay the quarter inch in marker on the seam and trim a quarter of an inch away from there. take it to the iron and I've got to press all that. Now I press these seams open. It's one of the rare occasions when I press seams open. Usually I don't. But because the reason for joining on the diagonal on a binding is that if you've got a straight line, and sometimes you want straight lines if you're doing different colours and things, but if you're not wanting a straight line there, you'll find that that seam has spread itself so it's not so bulky um, at where the join occurs. So now I need to just go along and press all those seams open and then I'll have my binding strip ready to go. So nothing terribly hard about that. Um, that diagonal line just makes things a little bit easier when it comes to sewing the binding onto the quilt. Um, but there are, uh, certainly are times when you might want to join it up differently. Now some people when they've done all this then press their binding in half along the full length of it because we will be using it in half. Uh, personally I don't press mine in half, I like to fold it and hold it over and let it roll around the quilt without an actual pressed fold in it. Um, I don't suppose there's any really good reason for that, it just feels like it wants to roll better that way for me. Um, but I know that a lot of people very successfully, now having got to this stage of their binding, then fold that and press it all before they use it. But I'm not going to do that, um, but I have now got this hugely long length of binding here all ready to bind my quilt. So I just thought I'd show you, tell you roughly how I calculate and show you how I make my binding strip. And usually when I'm making my binding, I do it at the same time as when I'm piecing or appliquing whatever it is for my quilt, so that I've got the same or the right fabric. 
that matches the quilt and I store it away in a drawer. I have a little drawer for bindings um, so that when I get around to quilting and binding my quilt, if it's not all done all in one go, and it very often isn't, I've got my binding already there for me to just go and help myself to and I can get my quilt done knowing that I've got a binding for it. I don't have to panic, oh, I haven't got any more of that fabric left or things like that. So hopefully that will help you in preparing bindings.